Now that is the CJ McCollum we want to see. The Pelicans guard found his shot and they used him differently than they have all season to make that happen. And despite what Charles Barkley says, this means the Pelicans big three do work together. Let's break it down. Plus big games from Jose, Larry Nance Jr. And we even saw Dyson Daniels in this one. It's locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans in NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Wednesday, day after the Pelicans beat the Memphis Grizzlies in a really fun game with a lot of just good performances on both sides. Minus the refs, 113-102, but the big story is CJ McCollum getting going. So we're going to look at that. We're going to talk about Jose and Larry Nance Jr. plus Dyson Daniels, and then what the Pelicans did on defense against John Morant, and a little bit of Trey Murphy action in the third segment of today's show. But we, I've rewatched every one of CJ's shots to really try and break this down for you, to show and talk about how they used him so differently. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day, here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about the team the way no one else is coming to you completely free Monday through Friday. After big wins like this one, Honestly, the Pelicans have had a couple of really good wins. The opening night win against the Brooklyn Nets, the win over the Clippers. This might be their best win of the season. It's always nice to beat John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. This game just had like an edge to it. You saw them kind of doing the short thing to one another. Both teams really wanted to win, and it felt like a playoff game. And the Pelicans come out on top with a really strong performance overall. And it starts with C.J. McCollum, the Pelicans guard, who in yesterday's show, the headline, slightly clickbaity, but not really, should they bench him, should they change his role, should they do something with him to get him going? They did. They used him very differently in this game. And guess what? It did get him going. 30 points on the night, 9 assists, by far his best game of the season so far. It's almost like... I don't know. Did they listen to the show or something like that? Did he listen? Did the coaching staff listen? Because they used him in a much different way. And I think that's the key to unlocking him. And this goes into then something that Charles Barkley said, which is frankly a dumb thing to say. CJ McCollum, who has been the Pelicans point guard, and they use him as an on-ball creator, and they should continue to use him in some capacity with that, had him taking a lot of early shots, a lot of self-created shots, And it just wasn't working. We went into some of the numbers, right? I gave you the percentages that he shoots early in the shot clock and that he's shooting like 21, 22% on those type of shots. And that's a chunk of his offense, if not the majority of it. Well, they used him off ball. By using him off ball, it means you can work actions and different things, different plays and the like for him to get him going and get him less self-created shots and more shots that are assisted. So on the night when he scores 30 points, he's 11 of 23 in this one, 7 of 13 from three, finally seeing that ball go in the net. And guess what? They used him off ball. They did not use him as a creator. Almost all of his shot attempts, not all of them, but almost all of them were him being run off different actions. And they did a number of different things for him. So rather than dribble, 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 move to the side, pull up, shoot a three, get a ball screen, move to the side, pull up, shoot a three, drive, realize the rim isn't there, elevate for the mid-range jumper. They used different ways to kind of spring him and create some space and gave him a lot more catch and shoot situations. They did pin down screens where he's on the baseline and a big runs down and or a guard sets a screen for his man and then he cups cuts directly up towards the three-point line. His man runs into the screen. They pass him the ball. Boom. Done. It's an off-ball action. They ran elevator doors, which is a version of that too, where he runs between two bigs who are standing at the side. He kind of slips through the middle, and then they just close like elevator doors, and it walls off his defender. They ran that for him. They ran him off of different ball screens, different actions all the time to just get him wide open, catch-and-shoot looks. 
And he rewarded him with that. These were not self-created threes. These were not self-created long twos. These were actions in the flow of the offense, deliberately trying to get him the ball. I mentioned that early shot clock number. All of his makes, all of his makes and almost all of his shot attempts, all occurred with 14 or less seconds on the clock in this game. Almost every single one of his shots, other than like one or two, and I'm forgetting the exact number right now, were, were later shot clock usage. You can see that they used him very, very differently in this game, and it was rewarded. I also think it does help that he finally just got some sleep. Two off days, good sleep, he said. You can do a lot of wonders for you. That probably helped too, but really using him in a different way, pairing him out there with Jose Alvarado, who really does create for others, and we'll talk about that in the next segment because they just ran a real simple two-man game with him and Larry Nance Jr. to get a bunch of easy buckets and really torch that Memphis Grizzlies defense. Dyson Daniels, who can create and gives you size as well. It just led to a lot of good things, and this is what we've been hoping the Pelicans do. So these are adjustments we wanted to see Willie Green make and he makes him and it leads to a big win over a division rival just a rival team in general and you don't have Zion Williamson oh that's what makes this you know really the one of the better games of the season for New Orleans so here here's the thing I didn't watch this myself but I've seen the cliff notes on Twitter and a number of y'all asked me about it Charles Barkley immediately after the win right is like oh this Pelicans team doesn't work their big three don't fit together See, if you're watching on YouTube, I could be making a number of different faces, hand gestures, different things like that, because this is dumb. And when you see CJ McCollum used off ball, off ball, we want to see more point Zion. So you run more point Zion, you think he can't make those passes to CJ McCollum, who's getting a screen from Larry Nance Jr. going up? Like, absolutely. All of this, all of this is able to be easily replicated with Zion out there acting as the fulcrum of your offense, the point Zion that we've wanted to see. Brandon Ingram, 19 points on 14 shots. Easy work for him on this one. Wasn't amazing, wasn't bad though. He was fine. You add that into the mix with this, there is zero problem with the way they run their offense with these three guys. They absolutely fit. CJ working off ball like this, more of that, please. We haven't seen a lot of that off-ball movement from him and this team at times this year. They're really good with the passes, getting it to the open man, but it's those off-ball actions that work, and you saw it. And that's what sprung CJ for 30 points easily, his best game of the season. Also, nine assists, too, because he's still a willing passer, and you can have him do that. But you don't need him creating his own offense. Have others create it for him. Get him into the rhythm. Get him into the flow of the offense. They did. They get the big win because of that. Another reason they got the big win, figuring out lineups that work and guys and pairings that work, like Jose Alvarado, who was massive in this game. And it wasn't hard what they had him do. Let's break it down. Plus Dyson Daniels, too, and why he's so important to the team. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Tarot. Tarot is the world's largest car sharing market. With Tarot, you can book any car you want whenever you want from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the US, UK, Canada, and coming soon to Australia. Book a spacious SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, get a classic or a luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday, and find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits your lifestyle too. Many tarot hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms and conditions and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at tarot.com. That's T-U-R-O dot com. Locked on Pelicans is also brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Can we just pause for a second? Because you've got to try this. There's new Built reimagined flavors cookie dough topper coconut brownie bar coconut brownie topper for the holidays they have white chocolate peppermint granola it's built's take on the granola bar so it's more filling and still insanely tasty and candy cane brownie puff puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud and so for anyone who hasn't tried built bars before they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built 
They're revolutionizing the nutrition game as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low in calories, just 130 calories in most of the bars. So you te- sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life forever. Built, you've got to try this. So go to uh, go to built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, that's LOCKEDON15 at built.com. You're going to get 15% off your, your next order. That's the promo code I use. I order these all the time. You really got to try them. They're that delicious. They're good. They're healthy for you. Locked on 15 at built.com. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, even when I'm on the road, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. And they looked good against the Memphis Grizzlies with CJ really rounding into form in the different ways that they used him, which all can be used with Zion Williamson when he's back out there on the court. And maybe they'll get a chance for that on the second night of a back-to-back as they take on the Chicago Bulls tonight in the Smoothie King Center. And now for your next listen, go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, Lost, if you need an acronym. From the games that matter to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with the local experts and insights Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. So we were talking about the Pelicans' big win over the Memphis Grizzlies. They just did such a good job in what was a really fun Game 113 102 over Memphis. CJ really being the hero, getting New Orleans going, looking exactly like we've needed him to. But they had a couple guys off the bench, three guys in particular who I thought looked great. And that's Larry Nance Jr., Jose Alvarado, and Dyson Daniels. We finally got Dyson Daniels minutes, and they were good including a block on John Morant. This is a guy who has a steal off LeBron James and a block on John Morant in his rookie year. It's pretty good accolades, right? They're not even accolades, but those are pretty good moments, I guess, to start your career off with. But again, we saw more Jose Alvarado minutes, and we talked about this after the win over the Houston Rockets. This dude is just so freaking impactful for the Pelicans. 12 points off the bench, six assists, just makes plays, got in John Morant's head a little bit, defended him well despite being undersized. And Jaw tried to tell him that by doing the little like short thing. Jose did it right back to him. And look, the Pelicans got the win. John Morant, by the way, 5 of 15 from the field in the second half. Only 12 points, finished with 36 on the night. They really limited him. And we'll talk about that in the next segment, how they did it. Because they really found a way to defend that sort of pick and roll, I thought, really, really well. And not let John Moran beat them. And no one else was capable of doing it. We'll break that down coming up next. Jose Alvarado, though. like You watch him play, and the way he wills this team to things is just incredible the energy that he plays with the way he just gets out and runs for this team gets them into early offense puts the defense on the back heels it's truly impressive because when you watch it the way he creates offense is different than say cj cj they're using off ball they're running all of these different actions for trying to kind of disguise where he's going things like that Jose Alvarado just realizes there's a seam and gets downhill and attacks it and forces the defense to rotate. He had a number of assists to Larry Nance Jr., who had 19 points on the night and was fantastic, including a monster dunk in this one. They had him, Jose Alvarado just goes downhill. You have Larry Nance Jr., who's in the left corner or the right corner too, the left corner in this one, realizes the defender rotates to to try and take away Jose Alvarado because he's really good and has a number of different things in his bag to score around the rim. And Larry Nance Jr. just cuts baseline. No one's there because the defense is rotated over to take away Jose. Jose just gets him the ball and it's the easiest layup dunk ever for Larry Nance Jr. And the Pals did this repeatedly over and over and over again. And it worked. And it got them a lot of these points, these really easy buckets. And it's nice to have a guard that just plays that way. I don't think that Devontae Graham has been bad this year. He's done everything asked, but he doesn't have this to his game. He's not as impactful as Jose Alvarado is. And that's why you saw him really take a back seat in this game and has been the past couple of games as Willie Green, I think, has more trust in Jose now than he has ever had before. Devontae Graham played nine and a half minutes in this one. Jose, 21. Jose needs to probably top out at around 24 minutes, especially if he's being this whirling dervish of a player during those 24 minutes, just kind of like an agent of chaos, right? You could see Grizzlies hated this dude at times. 
And that's so much fun. He's just an awesome player that does simple things that no one else does on this roster. You need a guy like that. He is not scared of going toe-to-toe with a player like John Morant, who is a superstar already in this league. And the little two-man game with Larry Nance Jr. just getting downhill, get the ball to Larry. Larry sets a pick for him, rolls to the basket. Jose gets the ball to him. He can go and score. It's great. Larry Nance Jr. has been so good, so good this season for this team. And you really saw it in this with the second unit, with the starters. We'll talk about him defensively more in the next segment too, because he was really key in that just an unbelievable performance from him, really elevating his game, realizing what his role on this team is him just getting healthy does a lot for this team too. Cause you really see the hops are back for him. He gets up a little bit better than he did last year. Needed this offseason, does it now. Love what I saw from him. Love what I saw from Jose Alvarado. They need to be playing those same roles for this team going forward without a doubt. And Dyson Daniels needs a bigger role going forward too. 17 minutes from him. The shooting wasn't quite there, though he did look pretty good in that one shot that he made. But here's the thing that he provides, a couple of things that he provides. It's not so much the shooting, right? He gives you size and defense. He had a block on John Morant in this game, as we mentioned earlier. He had nine rebounds, more rebounds than Larry Nance Jr. did in 13 fewer minutes. And Larry even joked about that, saying we got to give Dyson Daniels a lot of credit. Willie Green sung his praises despite not having played him for a while, despite all of us asking him to play him. But he gives you defense. He also gives you creation. He only had one assist in this. But you saw some pretty great outlet passes and passes that only he can make on this team. And when you run these lineups out there, that's important. The Pelicans need more creation and size out on the court, I think, at times, particularly around Zion Williamson. Dyson does that. Devontae Graham has not played poorly, but he doesn't give you creation. He doesn't give you rebounding. He doesn't give you defense. It's time to probably slow his minutes down even though he hasn't really done anything wrong exactly and give those minutes to a guy like Dyson Daniels, because the multifaceted style of his play, I think is that important to this team and like exactly what they need. So there's no real reason to not play him, not give him a lot of those minutes. So I think you'll start to see that creep up. And I do wonder if maybe Dice, um, Devontae Graham's kind of time in the rotation could be done. This was a good Dyson Daniels game. You need that size. You need the rebounding to end possessions. Long rebounds, defensive rebounding has been a problem for New Orleans, particularly with a small backcourt. Dyson Daniels solves a lot of that. And you saw it with his defensive rebounding in this one. And some pretty creative passing. And the defense is good too. And speaking of the defense, they slowed down John Morant in this one. That is not easy to do. Yeah, he's had 36 points in this. But in the second half, they played him differently. What they do, and is this something they can use going forward? Let's break that down coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net, your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. So get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, whether it's football, basketball, soccer, you got the World Cup right around the corner. Esports, they've got it all over at BetOnline.net. They also have sports podcasts. If you want to get the info behind all of the betting lines, you can find those at bet online as well so it's the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action happening over at betonline.net bet online where the game starts and thank you for making locked on pelicans your first listen today and every day we're here monday through friday for y'all breaking down everything you want to know about this team including The big win over the Memphis Grizzlies. We went into the X's and O's a lot today, and we're going to do that too in this segment as well because this was a well-coached game from Willie Green. They changed up their defensive coverage, I thought, a lot too against John Morant to really try and limit him, and it worked in the second half. So we'll get into that here in just a second. But for your second listen, go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, breaking down all of the biggest stories across all sports, not just the NBA, but the NFL, college the world cup coverage as well all of that the biggest sports stories covered from the local experts who are there on the daily basis just like we are here at locked on pelicans locked on sports today available wherever you get your podcasts and on youtube so final segment of today's show as the pelicans beat the memphis grizzlies 113 102 second half 
really turned it on defensively, limited the Memphis Grizzlies to just 42 total points, just 15 points in the fourth quarter is John ja Morant struggled in a good way. He had 36 with most of his damage coming in the first half. Finished with 24 points. He was 8 of 12 from the field in the first half. Second half, completely different story. 5 of 15. In the third quarter, they limited him best they could. And in the fourth, he just basically had nothing. He was 2 of 10. 2 of 10 for 5 points. 1 assist in the fourth quarter. So what did they do? How did they make this work to slow down one of the best young guards in the league? In their pick and roll coverage, which has been a problem for New Orleans, right? They tend to go with a lot of switching schemes here. And they somewhat did that in this one too. As John Morant came off screens, whether it was CJ, Dyson Daniels, it was mainly Trey Murphy who was guarding him in the second half. They would allow him to come off that screen and you would always see as they kind of switched was they switch put say Larry on him and you kept Trey Murphy behind uh John Morant every time so that if he pulled up to try and shoot you just block it from right behind this caused one or two times where he managed to beat that defense so quickly that he elevated shot and then someone ran into him from behind and gave him an a and one but more often than not it forced him to go to the basket and at that point, you're running in, hit, running him into a lot of length, whether it was Jonas Valanciunas in very limited minutes in the second half or a guy like Larry Nance Jr., who was there and has the spring in his step again to get up and contest that shot. And you saw Jaws' shot get blocked a number of times in the second half or just get stripped for a steal by Jose Alvarado or he's right up against the defender and they're not fouling despite what the refs really wanted to do in this game at one point in time, causing him to miss shots. And now he's out of position for a rebound too because he's right up against those guys. They turn around and they just get the board. And he's not able to get some of those long rebounds that he was maybe hoping for. It was just a really good way to kind of smother him. And it leaves the possibility open that other players can beat New Orleans. But if you're looking at this game where there's no Desmond Bain who's now out for them, yeah, let anyone else beat you, right? Let anyone else beat you. In the second half, no one was capable of doing that for the Memphis Grizzlies. Dylan Brooks was their only other player that had 12, uh, more than, that had double digit points. And it took him 11 shots to be able to do that. By forcing the ball into other role players' hands who aren't as good and the scoring was going to have to come from John Morant, the Pelicans won this one. Let anyone else beat you. Jaron Jackson Jr., who's back from injury in his first game of the season, two of eight in the second half. They knew that it was going to be kind of John Morant or bust for them, and those guys didn't deliver whatsoever for the Memphis Grizzlies. It it was a smart defensive game plan. If Dylan Brooks or Brandon Clark, the only other two guys in double figures, by the way, for Memphis, goes and scores 30, you, you know, and you limit John Morant in this one, You did your best. The game plan was fine, but sometimes guys hit shots. It worked. They didn't hit their shots. This was a great defensive game plan. I think this is something they can use going forward on some of these really good wing players. It was a great game from Trey Murphy to be able to defend him like he did. He also hit some threes, really used his three-point shooting threat to also drive and attack the basket. You saw him throw down like one monster dunk. Maybe there was a second one in there too. He was really, really good. You love to see that from him. He's had a bit of a rough shooting stretch somewhat recently, but he really got going in this one. And the threat of him as a score really does now start to burn defenses and really pull them out. He had a number of deep threes in this, a number of really deep threes. That's going to be on the scouting report. And it means guys are going to have to guard him out there, which is only going to open things up for the Pelicans even more especially when Zion comes back. So I look at this game and I say, there's a lot to take away that I think is something that you can build on. I said, their season kind of starts like now, right? You're finally in the homestand where you're getting some rest. That first game against Portland was not a restful game for the Pelicans at all. It was the second night of a back-to-back. Let's see how they do in this one against the Chicago Bulls. Second night of a back-to-back too as being home. Help that? Does this mean they've really started to turn the corner, figure some things out? We'll see if Zion's playing or not in this one. But you can see the blueprint for how everyone works together. 
that the big three are going to be just okay, despite what Charles Barkley says with a pretty stupid comment. That was dumb. He just wanted to make headlines or something like that. But that's why you come to Locked On Pelicans for the real analysis of what's going on. Because I'm here every day watching this team, which I promise you, Charles Barkley, Shaq, and all of those guys on Inside the NBA are not doing. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. Thank you all so much for listening. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Enjoy the game tonight, and we'll be back tomorrow to recap it.